When we talk about difficulty, people think, well, how is ease with difficulty? Because it's not after difficulty comes ease, it's literally what? Ma'a. It's with. Literally tucked, un tucked into the difficulty is your ease. But sometimes you can't see it right away. And sometimes that ease isn't the thing itself, but rather circumstances around it. People, individuals, resources, just the ability to deal with something heavy, emotionally. All of these are forms of yusra, right? And so look at the Prophet وسلم, in this year of prolonged sadness and difficulty. What happens after the death of the uncle and in the backdrop of this economic boycott, the Prophet وسلم, says, well, I have distant fam family that's in Ta'if. I no longer have protection of Quraysh. And they're not going to be listening to me. They're, they're, they're the people that are, you know, the important people of Quraysh are no longer listening to me. So why don't I try another set of distant family members and another tribe altogether? Maybe they'll listen. So he literally walks. And here you have the Prophet وسلم, head over there and he starts his da'wah. He starts to call people to Islam. He's got very specific, the heads of the tribe that he wants to reach one by one. And he goes to them. One by one. You know what they say to him? One person says to him, What? Your Allah couldn't find someone better than you to send us? Someone else says, If you really are the Prophet, then I'll be cursed. Right? The next person says, Don't even try to talk to me. Basically, each one of them kicks him out. Each one of them in turn kicks him out. And so he decides, despite all of this pain, Right, of people being very hum humiliating him, he decides to stay in Ta'if for a little bit longer. Why? He says, well, let me give the da'wah to the common people. Right? Their leaders don't want to listen. Maybe the commoners will listen. And then they started to actually be interested in what is this message of Islam? Do you know what happens next? The leaders get wind of the fact that the people are getting interested in Islam. So what do they do to him? They literally drive him out of Ta'if. And they literally pick up stones and pelt him with this, so much so that literally he starts to bleed, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It said that his heels were so bloody from this incident of the, oh, so many stones hitting him that his foot is sticking into his sandal because of the blood, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you know when you're, when you're, um, targeted like this, you're so humiliated like this, he said, I lost track of where I was. Can you imagine? You're being driven out and being pelted and pelted with stones and you're bleeding and you're kind of a little bit confused where you are. He said, I did not even know where I was until he got to a specific orchard. SubhanAllah, where is the, where is the yusra tucked into the usr here? He's sitting in an orchard and the orchard belongs to people who are technically enemies. Right? But he's sitting there and the people see him and he's bleeding and so they said they sent their servant to him and they said give him some grapes from the orchard. Right? Remember I told you orchards? Right? So when he when he see when he when he's offered these grapes, he says, Bismillah. And the servant who listens to this, he says, Who taught you to say this? And he says, I am a prophet of God, I'm taught this the way Allah has taught the prophets. And so he says, the servant says, I haven't heard anyone in these lands say these words. And he said, I too, I'm a descendant of Sayyidina Yunus. And I am a prophet just like the prophet Yunus. And we are both given a message from the same God. Do you know that that servant right there took his shahada and became a Muslim? People don't know some of the little finer details, but that was, he hoped for Ta'if to become Muslim, but he had this one person, and he said with this one person, it was the weight <laughs> of that entire current city. And you think about, had that whole city been annihilated, there wouldn't have been those believers today. But let's go back to our story. Here's the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's had what? Multiple losses, one after another. Why do I share this? Because when you think about the discussion on mental health and you think about person's well-being and mental wellness, we turn first to the Prophet ﷺ. What is it that we don't see? We don't see somebody 
turning after some difficulty, turning against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't see somebody saying, why me? We don't see somebody saying, I can do this completely on my own. Hmm. That last point is very important. And he had his community. And he went and tried to seek out support from the leaders who wouldn't listen to him. But he was trying because he knew that you don't do this alone. See, today we have a little bit of a trouble with this. A lot of us believe that we can do things completely on our own. We think that we need to be self-sufficient. We need to be able to wipe away our own tears. And in fact, we maybe shouldn't even have tears in the first place. And that's just simply not the message of our Prophet or the Prophets of the Qur'an.